Hi, everybody. Welcome to Teaching in Room 9, the area's largest classroom. I'm Mrs. Forth from the Rockwood School District. And today we're going to have fun learning a new skill that's really important for readers and writers and, well, everybody. Are you ready to find out what we're going to do? I'm going to hold up a word and see if you have seen this word before. It is kind of a long word, isn't it? This word is compare. Say compare. Compare. To compare things means to kind of take a look at what's the same about these things. How are they similar? When you're comparing, you're finding things that are the same. We can also find things that are different. That means we're contrasting. Say contrast. Contrast. So this week, we're going to spend a lot of time together working on compare and contrast. Finding things that are the same and finding things that are different. When we compare and contrast, it actually helps us better understand things. Things like books or the way an author writes a book or objects. Actually, when you all were itty bitty babies, just learning about how the world works and learning new words, what you were doing inside your brain is actually comparing and contrasting. When you were learning things like zebra and horse, they look a lot alike, except for what part? Yeah. The zebra has stripes, so you learn to think, well, this one always has stripes. A zebra is different than a horse because it has black and white stripes. That's what was happening inside your brains. You were already thinking about ways things were the same and way things were different in order for you to understand what those words meant. So we're gonna do just that. I'm actually gonna show you pictures of some objects. And I want you just to tell me about them. How would you describe this thing? And I'm gonna write those things down, okay? So that's how we're gonna get started with the activity today. All right, I have an orange here. So what can you tell me about an orange? How would you describe an orange? What are you thinking? It is fruit. Okay, I'm gonna write that on my sticky note here. Okay, it's definitely fruit. What else? It is orange, yes. Are oranges always orange? Yeah, they are, aren't they? What else? Mm. Will you have to peel it to eat it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sometimes when I cut my oranges also, um, there's seeds inside. So you might find seeds. Can you eat the seeds? They definitely cannot eat. So I'm gonna put, don't eat on the bottom. Look at that. Don't eat. Where do oranges grow? On trees? Mm -hmm. Grow on trees. Grow on trees. Anything else? It's a fruit. You have to peel it. They're orange. They have seeds that you're really not supposed to eat. They grow on trees. They're really juicy. Yeah. You can actually even make juice out of it. So you can juice them and make another treat, orange juice out of them. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to show you another picture, and I want you to tell me all about this picture, okay? Ready? And I'm going to cover these up so you're not distracted. What is this new picture? A banana. That's right, a banana. So how can you describe the banana? What is a banana? Yep, it's fruit. Hmm, let's think about how do you eat a banana? You have to peel it. Oh, I heard one of you say, hey, that's like an orange. You know what you're doing right now is comparing already. So it's fruit, you have to peel it. Hmm. Are there seeds? Yeah, have you ever looked right in the middle of a banana? You can see the little brown seeds. You can eat those seeds, can't you? Okay, so I'm going to write seeds. Okay to eat. Yellow. Great. Keep describing. Is it juicy? 
they can be hard or mushy. Yeah, they're sweet. Maybe a little mushy. They do get really mushy in your mouth, don't they? Yeah, great. So you guys did a really good job of activating your schema, which means thinking about what you already know about these two fruits. So hmm, I'm wondering if now we can compare and contrast the fruit. And I have something that can help us do just that. It's called a Venn diagram. Have you ever heard of a Venn diagram before? Venn diagram is pretty cool. It's really just made with two circles. And then what you can do is think about what only belongs to one thing and what do the two things share? So we're gonna do just that with our orange and our banana. So I'm gonna put our orange and banana at the top of our Venn diagram. So we have our orange here and our banana here. And what this means is, Everything in this part is for the orange or for the banana. And everything in this part is for the orange. But do you notice how the circles overlap? Yeah, because sometimes things are the same. So we're comparing and contrasting things that are the same and things are different that only these fruits have. So because I wrote all these ideas on sticky notes already, I think we can use the sticky notes that we have and then place them inside our Venn diagram. So I'm gonna start with all the sticky notes that I wrote for the orange. And let's think about where we would put these, okay? Remember, this is all for banana, and this is all for orange, and then things that they both have go in the middle, okay? So the first thing I have is peel, they have a peel. Hmm, well, we wrote it about the orange, but yeah, we also wrote it about the banana, which means they both have a peel. You have to peel them both. So I'm going to put that in the middle because that shows that's something that is the same about them. I'm comparing, which means I'm thinking about what's the same. Great. Okay, how about we have this one. Grows on trees. We wrote it about the orange. You're right. Bananas also grow on trees. So guess where I need to put that? Point to the screen. Yes, I need to put it right here in the middle because they both grow on trees. How about this one right here? I have seeds, but you don't eat. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. It belongs just in the orange. This is different. This is something that is different about the orange than the banana. We're contrasting them now, finding something that is different. Okay, how about, ooh, this one, juice. We talked about this with the orange, that you could juice the orange and make orange juice. Hmm, can we do that with banana? Not really, you don't really put bananas inside a juicer, do you? You can make smoothies with them, but. They don't really have a lot of water inside, so they're not a juicy fruit. So I'm gonna put that only on the orange side. Great, okay, how about, hmm, this one, yellow. That's right, the banana is yellow, unlike the orange, the orange is orange. So. The color of the fruit goes underneath just the part that means that fruit, not both of them, right? What about this one right here? Sweet. Is it just a banana sweet? Just an orange is sweet? Or both fruit are sweet? What would you say? Yeah, they're both sweet. They're both sweet, so I can put that in the middle. Let's see, how about this one? Seeds, okay to eat. What would you say? Under the banana. Great. Readers and writers, you just compared and contrasted the banana and the orange. You thought about what was the same, like they have a peel, they have 
Yeah, they grow on trees, fruit grows on trees, and they are sweet. But the orange has seeds that you don't eat. And the banana has seeds that you do eat. That's different. The orange can be turned into juice, and it is orange, whereas the banana is yellow. Did you notice that I kept using certain words as I was describing and comparing and contrasting? Well, there are certain words that you use when you are comparing and when you're contrasting. Do you wanna see what those words are? Okay, so let's take a look at words that you use a lot when you're comparing things, okay? Comparing. When you're comparing, you might use the word both. Both, and go ahead and say these words with me as I say them, ready? Both. They both are fruit, right? Do you see how I could think about what we did with our banana and orange and use the word both? You also might use the word two. Two. The banana is a fruit, two. You could use the word similar. Say similar. It means that they're pretty much the same. They're pretty much the same. They're similar because they're fruits. Yeah, that's something that makes them the same. Similar. Okay, how about alike? Alike. Oranges and bananas are alike because they grow on trees. You might use the word also. Also. Hmm. How would I use the word also? Bananas are fruit. And oranges are fruit also. Yeah. Do you see how all these words are helping us say that they are the same in a certain way? These are great words for us to use when we're comparing things. When we're comparing things, the last one I put on there is the same. They are the same because they are fruit. So when we're comparing, we could use these words. You want to say them again with me? Okay. Both, two, similar, alike, also the same. Just like having words when we're comparing, there are words that we can use when we Contrast, remember contrast is to tell how things are different or not the same. So some of these words might be unlike, unlike. Unlike a banana, you don't eat the seeds in an orange. Another word you might hear is however, however. Oranges and bananas are fruit, However, you can eat the seeds in a banana. <laughs> Great idea. You guys are really getting the hang of this. How about this one? But, but, hmm. You can eat the seeds in a banana, but not in an orange. We're sharing how they're different. Which brings me to the word different. Oranges and bananas are different fruits because they are different colors. Different. You might also hear the word while. While bananas and oranges are both fruits, you can't eat the seeds in both of them. Great. You also could hear the word however, however, however. Although bananas and oranges are both fruits. Hmm. Think about that. However, however, hmm. Oranges and bananas are both fruits. However, they are different colors. Oranges and bananas both grow on trees. However, you can't eat both their seeds. Great. So you're thinking about both of them on that one, aren't you? So compare and contrast. 
So today, what I want you to do is think about some things in your world, maybe a cat and a dog, and you can play this game with somebody at home. Tell about what's the same and what's different about these two animals. Compare and contrast. And we're going to keep doing just that together. And we're actually going to do it with books. So I hope you join me tomorrow as we begin thinking about how we can compare and contrast the stories that we read. I hope to see you next time. Have fun in math. Bye, hey, friends. Thanks for the amazing book, Mrs. Forth. I love listening to you read. Okay, so I am really excited to practice counting by fives today. You're probably already really good at counting by fives, but we're gonna practice today. And I first um, thought I would show you the different ways that I represented five. And then we are going to build something out of it. We don't need to do any stretches because you're about to get a lot of movement, all right? So I have the number five right here. I have five circles on this page. Count with me, are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. So this is a way of representing five. Then I have this. One plus one plus one plus one plus one equals five. Another way to show five. Now I have zero and five make five, right? Another way to represent five. Okay, you tell me what you think this one is. What is this one? Yeah, tally marks, right? One, two, three, four, cross through makes five. So anything, anytime I see tally marks, I know I can count by fives. This one, what is this design? It's a domino, right? Four on one side and one on the other makes five. See if you can figure this one out. I keep showing it to you over and over again, right? My hand. You have five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. This is one of my favorite ways to show five, and it's a ten frame. One, two, three, four, five. We know it's five by looking at it because we see five full frames. Five empty frames, five and five makes 10. So if only five are full, we know it's five. Another one I have, a nickel, 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 thick and fat. You're worth five cents, I know that. Another representation of five. And we have a number line. As you can see here, zero, and then we have five tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. So a number line is another way to show five. And last but not least, we're gonna be using these throughout the week. I have one, two, you got it, three, five craft sticks. One, two, three, four, five craft sticks. All right. Now it's time to set up our little activity. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, I have set up a hopscotch with our group, different representations of five. So all of these are different ways to represent five and all of these are ways that you can group five. Okay, so think of each paper as a group of five that's represented in a different way. So each time, and you can stand up and do this with me, each time I step on one, we're going to count by fives. Okay, let me walk you through this. So this first one, I'm using as a number line. So I can already see that it goes from zero, 
One, two, three, four, five. So this is five. And then I'm going to add 10, I'm sorry, I'm going to add five more. So I'll go five. Then I can see, look, there is another five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm five and five makes 10. So 10, five more is 15. Step with me, 20. One more time with me, counting by fives. You can either hop or point. I will leave them all on there. Here we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. All right, let's come back down. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Whew, that was fun. And I'm a little sweaty. Are you? <laughs> so if you haven't figured it out yet, this week we are learning and reviewing how we can count by fives to 100. And we're also going to figure out, hmm, how is counting by fives related to telling time. So we're gonna learn that I can tell time and write time to the nearest five minutes using an analog or a digital clock and using AM or PM. So let me give you a little preview about what we will be doing the rest of this week. So we have a clock. Now, this is a clock that I use for teaching. Um, there are other clocks, and honestly, I tried to get one down off the wall, and uh, I almost ripped a hole in the drywall, so Mr. Wright said I had to use this one. <laughs> so here we are. I was gonna show you a real life one. Not that this isn't real life, but this one doesn't tick on its own. Anyways, this is what an analog clock would look like. And this, let me show you on my iPad, is what a digital clock would look like. Ooh, that's kind of hard to see. See how on the iPhones um, or any phone device you have, I should change the background so we can see this a little better, but it says 1206. 
So, there we go, now you can see it a little better. 1206. If I were to show you, this is literally the only digital clock that I have. Um, some people have those digital clocks where you can plug it in and it'll show you like the time. Um, like it would on my like microwave or stove. I'm gonna have to show you those because this was kind of hard to see. But this is a digital when it just gives it to you. Now it doesn't tell you AM or PM, so you have to figure that part out. So it is 12.06, so if we're going to the nearest five, it would look like 12.05. So this is your minute hand. And how I remember which hand is which is the minute hand is longer, it's a longer word. So the minute hand is the longer hand. The hour hand is the shorter hand because the word hour is shorter. So I'm going to make this clock match my digital clock of 12.05. So as you can see, this right here goes around the clock by fives, just like we practice counting. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60 minutes. When it's 60 minutes, it goes back to zero, zero. So if I was at 12, this would be 12, and the hour hand is going to stay pointing at the 12, but the minute hand would move five minutes. So we're five minutes past the 12 o'clock hour. Now, it's light outside. I just woke up a couple hours ago. So it's just now turning from a.m. to p.m. We are now in the p.m. hours of the day. 12.05 p.m., okay? All right, I will see you back here for more counting by fives and learning about clocks. Bye guys. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.